Um, welcome back. I just uploaded two videos, one back from when Milo was 15 months old, he's now almost two, and also um, a video of us finding out we're pregnant and I kind of talk about all of that. Um, I'm actually now 33 weeks pregnant and I feel really bad for this baby because I love looking back at all of my pregnancy updates with Milo and I just don't have those memories so I'm trying really hard to get caught up and get some videos out there for all you guys. So this video is just going to be a first trimester kind of recap. Um, so let's just dive right in. Um, just a little tiny backstory with our first we had to use fertility treatment to get pregnant. This one was a much quicker experience, the first try, um, and everything was just kind of a shock. Um, I also had a lot of complications in my labor and delivery. I had preeclampsia, I had a blood clot in my lung, and also needed a blood transfusion. So with all that in mind, we're gonna go ahead and jump into kind of what happened the first 12 weeks of my pregnancy. So I found out I was pregnant just a few days before, four weeks, four weeks. Um, I was like three, I was three weeks and five days pregnant when I found out. Um, and I knew that because I had a blood clot before that I would need to start blood thinners and I would need to take those throughout the entire pregnancy as well as postpartum for about eight weeks. Um, so I, I talked to my doctor, which at that point was the fertility specialist. Um, I didn't have a regular doctor yet, and he prescribed me the Lovenox injections. It's a, a blood thinner you inject into your stomach once a day. And he told me to start those at five weeks. Well, the morning that I turned five weeks, I planned on picking up that prescription and starting my blood thinners, um, but I woke up with a weird pain in my leg, and my heart rate was very rapid. And so I went ahead and went into the ER um, because I was concerned. And they did a bunch of tests. They did an ultrasound on my leg. They did an ultrasound on my heart. They did a chest x-ray. They were trying to avoid doing a CT scan, but um, a test came back that indicated a possible blood clot. So they went ahead and said, we, we have to do the, the test, um, the CT scan, and we need to know for sure if you have a blood clot in your lung or not. So I was really nervous about that, but the doctor reassured me that they would use the lowest radiation, they'd shield the baby as best as possible, and that there would be very minimal exposure, and it was something that it just had to be done. Thankfully it came back that there was no blood clot, and after being there for hours and hours, they finally released me, and the doctor just said I had an unexplained tachycardic heart. Um, Basically, I had a rapid heart rate for no reason, and that's kind of been a reoccurring theme throughout this entire pregnancy, as my heart rate's been a little elevated, and at times we'll get into kind of some of those scarier numbers for no apparent reason. So that's been something I've kind of dealt with on and off. It doesn't happen too often, but when it does, I always panic a little bit because when I did get my blood clot in my lung, that was the really the only indication that I had that something was wrong. Um, and then I think when my heart rate does get a little fast, I start to panic, which makes it even faster. So it's just kind of like a snowball effect going on there. So that was the first kind of scare of the pregnancy at five weeks. Um, and then about a week and a half later, I went in to my fertility doctor. He was going to do an ultrasound and then release me to a regular OB. Um, he just wanted to make sure everything looked good. And obviously, um, just kind of do that dating ultrasound and stuff. So, uh, there was a healthy baby with a healthy heartbeat. Um, but then on my right ovary, there was something um, that probably was a cyst or a leftover debris from where I ovulated. Uh, but there was a little tiny black kind of dot in the middle of it. It looked almost like another sack with a baby but it was in my fallopian tube. Um, so that was concerning because that would have been a second baby, but it was ectopic, which is very dangerous, very scary. Um, obviously a baby can't grow inside of a fallopian tube. 
So he said, I think this is probably nothing, but I need you to come back in a week so we can see what's going on in there. In the meantime, if you have any bleeding or cramping or pain, go to the emergency room immediately. Um, so that was a little freaky and I was very nervous that whole week. Um, a week later, finally I go back and it's still there, but it's smaller and there's not a black little mass in the middle anymore. And he said, okay, great. It's just fluid. Um, a little bit of blood left over from where you ovulated. It's, it'll go away on its own. Nothing to worry about. Not a, not a second baby, not a topic pregnancy. You're good. So that was a relief, but again, another little scare. Um, so then I switched over to OB care and I really like my doctor. She's been great. Um, I saw her for the first time at 10 weeks and at my 10 week appointment, I had gained four pounds. So, um, that's good, bad. I don't know. In my first trimester, I gained about five, maybe six pounds. Um, even though I was nauseous and throwing up like every day, I didn't, I still ate like uh, one thing that helps with the nausea is I ate still. Um, so I did have nausea throughout my whole entire first trimester up to 15 weeks. The throwing up, um, just like my first pregnancy. This time with a toddler, it was kind of rough. It was a lot more difficult. Um, so I did end up taking something for it. I didn't want to take any prescription medication, but I did try the Unisom and B6 combo. So you take like half a Unisom and a B6 vitamin at night. And I am telling you, it helped a ton. I could get through the morning and feel somewhat normal. Um, then Milo would take a nap and I could rest. And then, you know, the evenings, afternoons are pretty terrible, but at least I had a few hours in the morning where I could, I could function. Um, <clears throat> so that kind of sums up the first trimester. Um, those two little scares, nausea, that, you know, I just, my pregnancies just for some reason are not the best. Um, this whole pregnancy, I felt a lot of anxiety, which I'll get into more in some later updates. Um, just one thing after another has happened. Um, it's always, it's never been anything, but there's always been like that, that fear. And obviously here I am at 33 weeks. Um, I don't have preeclampsia yet. Hopefully I don't get it, which is great. Um, that's when it started last time. I, I didn't realize that I had it, but that's when the severe swelling set in last pregnancy it was at 33 weeks. So it was a huge milestone to make it to 33 weeks this pregnancy and still have my blood pressure in check and not have any swelling. Um, so I'm excited about that. So that's going to be like my first trimester kind of briefing. Um, and then in my next video, I will update you about what happened in the second trimester. So stay tuned and I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.